It's no secret that Christmas is my favorite time of year. I absolutely love it. It's the time of year where everybody is happy. Everybody is looking forward to it. You get together with friends and family. And getting together with family especially puts the FU in fun. So, along with this is one of the most important aspects of any holiday, which is the food. So today I want to help you along with your Christmas planning by sharing a few of my key Christmas recipes that are sure to please, that are very easy to prepare, and for the most part, actually a few of them, you can actually plan ahead and make them ahead the day or two before with no problem at all. We're going to include an appetizer, we're going to include a salad, we're going to include the stuffing or the dressing, a potato dish, and as well, the main event, our turkey. So, to start us off, the appetizer that I selected for, or that I always put on my table, is an absolutely divine baked feta in filo, drizzled with honey. You put this out and people will go mad. And this is how it goes. So the first thing we're going to do is very simply take a little bit of olive oil and just quickly just brush it on your the first layer of phyllo. And in for this, in case you're wondering, I'm using olive oil and the general rule of thumb for me is if you're going to make something that's savory, make it with olive oil. If you're using something that's sweet or a pastry, something like baklava, galactoburico, or anything like that, then you can use melted butter. So here I have a about 250 gram piece of feta that I'm going to literally just start in the corner of my uh, phyllo sheet here. And all I'm going to do very, very carefully is start rolling it and wrapping it. And as I wrap this now, the side that hasn't been rubbed with olive oil, you're just going to give it a little quick baste. Not too much. You don't want this thing drowning in olive oil. You just want a little bit. Then you take this next piece and you just flip it over like that. And you continue to rub the olive oil. For this, we're just going to pop this into a 350 degree oven, which I've already got preheated, for about half an hour to 45 minutes or until the filo dough becomes flaky and brown. You don't want to overdo this, just enough to make it a nice golden brown color. All right, so it's been about half an hour, about 45 minutes or so. I've taken it out of the oven. I've let this rest for a little bit. They're done to perfection. They're absolutely perfect. If you can see them, just lovely. I cannot tell you how excited I am. And the next thing we're going to do is add a little bit of honey. Just drizzle honey over it, just like that. Ah, what the heck. I'll crisscross it. And there you go. And as the last and final little hurrah, take a little bit of toasted sesame seeds sesame seeds and just sprinkle them around just like that easy perfect and there you go my friends this is one of the most delicious and traditional dishes it is baked feta in phyllo dough with drizzle of honey and a few sesame seeds and that's it the next thing on the menu is the salad and there is no holiday table, no matter what, without some kind of salad. And in this case, I'm going to show you my beet salad. It's a Greek up beet salad. Very delicious, very easy to make. And it's a hit with just about everybody. And if you're like me, where you're going to have uh, a bunch of salads, why not include this one? So, nothing to this recipe at all. Very simple. What I've done here is pre-peeled some beets from my own garden of course and what we're gonna do is very simply get a flat roasting uh, sheet or a baking sheet and 
get ready because this is what we're gonna bake them, roast them off at. So first things first, preheat your oven, 400 degrees Fahrenheit or about 200 degrees Celsius. And from there, once it's off and going, the next part is we take a flat baking sheet, very simple, and just, you're gonna make a parchment paper um, parcel, if you will. Our pre-peeled beets have been done. Place them in an even flat layer on your baking sheet. Next, Greek extra virgin olive oil. Just drizzles a little bit on all of them. Nothing complicated, nothing fancy at all. A little bit of salt, just like that. A little bit of pepper goes in. So what I'm gonna do real quick is just slice up the garlic. Perfect, right there. And what you're gonna do is simply fold everything over into this and make like a little parcel with your parchment paper. And now this, my friends, is ready to go in the oven. We're gonna bake this off 400 degrees for about an hour. I've allowed them to cool for about half an hour or so. Nothing worse than incinerating your fingertips trying to like slice up some beets. So we're just slicing up our beets into quarter inch to by half inch slices. Place your beets. They're still a little warm, but what we're gonna do is either way you can serve this warm or you can serve this cold. Whichever you prefer is totally fine. Next thing to go in is a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt, salt to, to taste always, a little bit of, of course, Greek extra virgin olive oil. And for this, you're gonna do about three or four tablespoons. You want a nice generous amount at this point here. A little bit of Greek oregano. We'll go over these as well. Next thing to go in is a little bit of balsamic vinegar. You can do about three or four tablespoons again as well there, whatever you prefer. And the last part of this is about 50, 60 grams of feta will just get crumbled in over my beets. And that, my friends, is my Greek-inspired roasted beet salad. Olive oil, balsamic, feta, oregano. Can't beat it. We all have stuffing with our turkeys whether you put it inside as stuffing or you leave it out as dressing and bake it separately it is always always one of the first things to go and rarely do you have leftovers of this well today i want to show you my special christmas dressing very very flavorful this is one of these dishes that you can make ahead uh, the day before pop it in your fridge the night of and then the next day just bake it off doesn't get much easier than that. And you have all the classic Christmas flavors. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make an absolutely simple and scrumptiously delicious dressing for your turkey, your chicken, duck, anything that you wanna kinda of add a side dish to, this will be a perfect uh, solution. This dish here is not to be mistaken with stuffing. I'm, I used to be into stuffing, not that much, anymore dressing is what you bake beside what you're serving it's not something that actually cooks inside for example your turkey cavity or your chicken or anything else i've got three pork sausages very carefully just open up the casing just like this and pull off the the meat or pull out the meat from inside that way you're just left and you're going to get rid of the uh, casings. All right, so now that our casings have been removed, I'm going to take some butter and put that in my pan. Actually, quite a bit of butter, but that's fine. It's a holiday recipe, so that's totally cool. And what you're going to do is just very simply break up your sausage in your pot. So just throw that in there. Make it all nice and happy. Now we're just gonna give our sausage 
a little bit of a stir just to get it moving around in the pan here or the pot. Next step, our veggies. What I'm gonna do is, I've already got some pre-sliced chestnuts here. Throw them into my food processor. They go in there just like that. A couple of onions. You wanna go a little heavier on the onion flavor, so those go in as well. Can have stuffing or dressing in this case without sage. And in this case, I'm using just a small bunch of sage and carrots. I'm gonna cut these up into small pieces for the sake of my food processor, and then just put them all in there and do them all up in one shot. A little salt goes in, a little dried rosemary, some minced garlic. You're looking at about two or three cloves of the garlic, a little bit of olive oil, just to kind of lube everything up. This is actually gonna almost be like a paste by the time you're done with it. So throw our lid on that and just get that going. All right, so our veggies are done in here. And I'll show you, they came out perfectly actually. It's actually almost like a pulpy consistency and that's what you want. You don't want any kind of huge chunks in this, but we want the essence of the flavors going into our stuffing or our dress. I keep saying that, it's actually dressing, not stuffing. So this goes in, in to our browning sausage. Very easy so far, nothing to this. Put that off to the side and just give this a quick stir. Now as our veggies and our sausage are browning off and cooking down, preheat the oven 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius just to have that kind of going along in the background we could, while we continue on with our dressing. The next part of this is two cups of vegetable stock. That's gonna go into our pot and into our kind of story here. At this point, as you can see, it looks pretty runny. And this is where our bread comes in. I'm using for this recipe, just regular, that toast bread or that wonder bread that's kind of pre-sliced, this stuff here, very easy to work with. The recipe calls for five cups. The important thing here is to play it by ear. You don't want this too runny. So start off with five cups. If you need a little bit more, add a little bit more. The last thing you want is a runny dressing or something that's almost like a bread pudding. That's a no-no. As we move along now, the next part of this is our pan. For this, I'm using just a straight, one of my favorite pans, the nine by 14 pan that's about two and a half inches deep, which will work perfectly for this. So I'm just gonna turn off my heat from this and take my stuffing and place it in my pan. There I go, I said stuffing again. The next part of this that adds a little bit of decadence and luxury is a cup of heavy cream. You just mix that in there, just like that, and let it kind of work its magic in itself. Now, in the same mixture, two eggs. I'm just gonna quickly break a couple of eggs here and add them as a binder, which will help tighten this dressing up. Perfect, that will go in there like that. Put that here and just put it all evenly, mix it all up here with your spoon or whatever you're using. All right, so now my dressing is in the pan. It's ready to be fired. This is gonna go into a 400 degree oven for about an hour to an hour and 20 minutes, depending on your oven. And once it comes out, you're looking for a golden brown crust on top, and that's gonna be perfect, and it's gonna be ready to go. So my dressing is done. It's been about an hour in the oven. I just took it out. 
It's hot as sin, so I'm not going to cut into it now because I also don't want it to kind of collapse in itself. So basically, it's done to perfection, as you can see right here, and that's really hot. But anyway, it's perfect. An hour, 400 degrees, done like dinner. So now that we have our appetizer, we have our salad, and we've done our dressing, you need a starch. You need to have some kind of a potato. And there's been mashed potatoes, roast potatoes, baked potatoes. Well, how about this year we go with a Greek recipe for potatoes, a potatoes yachni, which is a almost like a braised potato in the oven. Super flavorful and it goes great with turkey and everything else. Check this out and let me know what you think. In Greek, this is a very traditional recipe called patates yachni. And what this is, is basically sliced potatoes, all in done in one pan in a light and very flavorful and aromatic tomato sauce, slowly baked in the oven for maybe about an hour and a half, and it turns out absolutely delicious. So to start us off, I'm using basically a nonstick 9 by 14 pan. You can use whatever you have, totally cool. And along with this, I am using about four pounds of russet potatoes. Now, I've already pre-peeled these potatoes. You really don't need to watch me peel potatoes. It's right up there with watching paint dry. While I'm slicing up my potatoes, and again, you can cube them up, you can chop them up, whatever you like, a good idea is to preheat your oven 400 degrees Fahrenheit or about 200 degrees Celsius and get that going so that way by the time we're ready to pop our pan in it's ready to go as well all right so the next part of this like we said is the sauce or our braising liquid and with the help of our trusty food processor here what i'm going to do is very simply use two carrots and slice these up you're going to use a couple of sticks of celery go in just like that Next thing to go in is one onion, just like that. Nothing to this at all, right? So I'm gonna take this now, empty it out, and put all of our sliced veggies into our bowl. It's basically a mixing bowl. And for this, very, very easy as well, I'm gonna take some garlic, I like to go heavier on the garlic here. I'm using about four or five smaller cloves. You can never have too much garlic, believe me. And just very simply just chop it up. So the next thing to go in is some chopped parsley. Small handful, maybe a cup or so of chopped parsley. Here you want to go a little heavier on the salt because you're salting not only the sauce, but you're salting the potatoes as well some fresh cracked black pepper. Along with this goes 28 ounces of crushed tomatoes. Take our empty posada jar and add a little bit of liquid. Actually, I want to fill it up with some liquid. Give that a shake in there. Get all the crushed tomato goodness out and just add it to our mixture and slowly start stirring it until you want this almost like a runny consistency because the goal here is to have our potatoes about halfway covered before we put them in to bake off. And what we're gonna do now is just take this and slowly pour this goodness over our potatoes. Make sure it doesn't go all over your floor. Just like that, that's perfect. Even it all out. <laughs> we need some olive oil. Greek extra virgin olive oil, no less. And you don't want a chintzy on this. This is very important. Add a solid quarter cup, third of a cup into this. It's only going to add to the flavor. And now the next part of this is covering this with foil. This is now going to go into a 400 degree oven, which is preheated. And it's going to just bake off, roast off for about an hour and a half to two hours. All right, so now my potatoes yachni are ready. They're just out of the oven. It's been in there, or they've been in there for about 
two hours, give or take. You can just smell now all that goodness, all that deliciousness. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. You guys send me messages, texts, emails about, you know, asking me about how I make my turkey and why, you know, uh, your turkey comes out dry or how, uh, what way can you improve your turkey. I'm your guy. Today I'm going to show you my 100% foolproof method for making the most delicious, the juiciest, the best looking turkey you've ever made. And if you just follow the instructions, it will turn out perfectly for you every time, all the time. And let's face it, when you add bacon, you add a whole bunch of butter to things, it makes everything better. And growing up in a Greek household, my mother, God bless her, she didn't cook a turkey, she, she cremated a turkey. We had like a cremation ceremony every Christmas and Thanksgiving. It was insane. But anyhow, enough of my childhood trauma. Check out my recipe for the perfect roast turkey. First things first, I'm gonna talk about my rub or what I'm gonna use to actually flavor and moisten the bird. And for this, very simply, I'm gonna take two sticks, the equivalent of two sticks of salted butter. Very important here. Salted because you, you don't wanna go too chintzy on the salt on a bird this size. This is like a 15, 16 pound turkey. So you want to just be generous with that. Along with this, I'm going to take some dried rosemary and I'm going to use about a tablespoon of dried rosemary and I'm just going to put it into my butter. Some fresh cracked black pepper that goes into this as well. Some garlic, of course. About two or three cloves of garlic. Nice flavor. Keeps it going. Sweet paprika. This is actually going to give you a nice, even though it's sweet, it's going to bring out a smokiness to this and it's going to give you a depth of flavor that's really, really good. And, of course, sage. So I'm going to just chop up my sage. Not too, too finely, but enough that basically you'll be able to know that it's there so that goes in just like that perfect and some salt even though my butter is salted i'm still going to add a little more because it's turkey and it can handle the flavor plus you're going to be roasting this off for about three three and a half hours so there's nothing like going in with your hands and what you're going to do is just mix this with your hands as evenly as you can getting everything kind of incorporated in here so for this this is a little bit of the tricky part here that i'm going to show you how to do here and i'm going to turn this around actually just to get you kind of really kind of immersed in this in the cavity here we're going to fill later but for now you have the breast up here and you have the skin now in between the breast and the skin is like a little area where you're gonna have to take just your hand and very carefully without this is very important without actually breaking the skin move your hand inside this cavity here get your mind out of the gutter this is like just move it to separate the skin from the breast just like that this Oh, that feels good actually. Never mind. That's another episode. So now, going back to this, we have this kind of deliciousness here. And what you're going to do is take a generous, oh, make sure it doesn't go away, take a generous handful of this. And what you're going to do is sneak this up. See how I've separated the skin? Move that right inside there in that cavity and just push it through. So let me just spin this around carefully so you can see. I've actually moved this and I filled this whole cavity between the breast and the skin with this butter mixture. This, as this bird rolls off, is going to be so amazing. It's going to melt into the meat and flavor the meat. 
take a little more here, just like that, for the other side. Now we're gonna take some more of this and we're just gonna smear it and slather it all over our bird. What I'm gonna do is take a little more salt and a little bit more pepper and kind of sprinkle a little bit over my turkey and as well get inside as well that's not uh, nothing wrong with that in fact you want to energize it with a bit of flavor in there as well give it another generous coating of pepper nothing wrong you can't go wrong with the pepper very very it works really really well with this and even if you go a little heavier that's totally cool now this is the kicker what I'm going to do now is just carefully transport my turkey from here into my pan so now with this my bird just like that here and it's all kind of coated and slathered with deliciousness the next thing that I do is I take some bacon like maybe four or five slices and what I do is I put it on the bird so basically this fat from the bacon will actually render down as it cooks and it'll also add a smokiness to our bird as well now i'm also going to take my wings the wing tips and i'm just going to put them underneath the next thing we're going to do is tent put a little piece of aluminum foil over the breast part depending on how you cook this but i just tent the whole thing for the first maybe couple of hours just to get it cooking from the inside as well what i like to do is i have some clementines here tines clementines and i stuff the cavity with the clementines a lot of people will do lemon a lot of people will do citrus like oranges or whatever clementines will work just stuff those in there so that's two clementines have so now, as I'm about to tent my bird, I will tell you, preheat your oven 325 degrees and just let it go steady. Don't worry about some people when they say, uh, blast it to 500, 550, and when you put your bird in, bring it down to 325. Cooking a turkey is a marathon. It's not a race. What you wanna do is just go low, slow, and steady. So I got one piece gonna tent it here just like that it doesn't have to be anything fancy you just don't want your your turkey to basically get like overcooked do that here just like that and that's perfect and there you go now this is a 15 16 pound bird this will go into my 325 degree oven for about three and a half hours give or take three hours three and a half three hours and 45 minutes at the two hour mark is when you want to untent it and let it kind of cook off on its own so it'll get that brown crispy deliciousness on the outside our bird is cooked for about three and a half hours or so and allowed to rest which is absolutely vital for another 45 minutes after which now we're going to start the carving process the first thing i do is actually separate and cut up the breast the breast in itself i just used the breastbone to as a guide to kind of move on down the the back of the turkey as you can see here and from there i just move along horizontally at the base of the breast once you cut it in horizontally from the bottom you'll find that the breast will actually come apart and fall apart on its own which is exactly what we want from here, you could actually now start actually slicing up your turkey breast into the number of servings or pieces you want. I don't like these little itty bitty thin little slivery pieces. I like substantial portions. So my slices are closer to about an inch to three quarters of an inch thick. And the drumstick again as a general rule of thumb, basically we just have it as it falls off, the easier it comes off, the more well done it is or the better it is. You remove the cartilage from the bottom, separate it, and we move on to the next one. So that's it, my friends, for my kicked up, greeked up Christmas feast. You can do all of these recipes. You can pick and choose which ones you like, but either way, no matter what you do, 
it will be a definite hit and a plus in your addition for your menu. So I thank you so much for watching again. I thank you for your continued love and support. Believe me, I read each and every message and I try to respond to all of them. And let's face it, if you can take the time to message me or comment, I can take the time to respond to you. Please take care of yourselves, take care of each other, stay safe, have a, from my family to your family, have a very happy Merry Christmas, a safe and happy New Year, and let's make 2021 even better than, well, actually 2020 was uh, pretty much in a crapper from the get-go, from like early on. And so there's not much of a bar there to, you know, kind of beat. But the point is, stay safe, enjoy everybody, and much love from me to you.